Hi, thank you for joining me for practice today. My name is Anna and today's class is based on this concept that in order to have freedom and adaptability in our movement, we first have to create the sense of structure and stability. So this always reminds me of trees that have these really strong, stable trunks and these expansive root systems that allow the tree to be able to move and sway with the wind without collapsing and without breaking. So today specifically, we are going to be paying close attention to holding our pelvis specifically in more of a neutral position and finding some stability there to support us as we move in a variety of ways around the mat. So we are gonna be using blocks today. So if you have them handy, go ahead and grab them. And we are gonna get started on our backs. So coming into a supported bridge, you'll be on your back with the block. I'm gonna take it on its lowest height. You could also do uh, the middle height here, but placing that block right underneath your sacrum. It's gonna be at the base of the spine and you want a little bit of kind of the flesh of your glutes off of the block. And we'll just take a moment here to place your hands on your front pelvic points. Right here, these two bones on either side of your pelvis. And just notice that these two pelvic points, along with your pubic bone, a little bit lower, it's kind of in one, kind of in one line here. So we're letting the sacrum on the back just move down into the block. And the glutes are working a little bit, right? So we have this lengthening of the tailbone toward the knees. And then just feel the back of your skull on the floor and your shoulder blades resting on the floor there as well. And then you can take your hands onto your lower front ribs and just gently guiding them down toward your pelvis so you feel a softening of your lower back ribs toward the floor. Okay. Now we're gonna have the hands on those front pelvic points again. And then just feeling here how the pelvis is pretty level side to side. And we're gonna aim to keep that as we start to march the feet. So you can have your fingers in the hip creases here and feel how you're deepening that hip crease as that knee pulls up. And so we're starting to differentiate movement in the hip joints versus movement in the pelvis. So we're keeping that structure of the pelvis steady on the block here as we start to move within the hip joint. Easier said than done, right? And so as you keep moving there, let's just start to breathe a little bit deeper, breathing in and out through your nose. Let's do a couple more rounds of this marching. Nice. All right, and then both feet will come down to the floor. We're gonna slide that block off to the side and come all the way down. And then we're coming up into a bridge here. So feel those lower back ribs push down into the floor and then we'll drive the glutes up. All right, so we've got that lengthening of the tailbone forward, lower back ribs pushing down so we aren't popping the ribs up. Nice. And then let's bring the arms straight up toward the ceiling like you're holding a tray. We'll take the right hand and pull the left fingers back. Getting a nice little wrist stretch. You can even imagine that your pubic bone and your lower front ribs are sort of zipping up towards each other. Right, so we're just creating this nice length in the lower back. And then switching hands, the left hand pulls the right fingers back. Always, if you're here and you're not sure if you're feeling your glutes working, you can always give that glute a little bit of a tap. Respond very well to just some of that tactile cueing. All right, 
take last breath here. Then go ahead and let your arms come down to the floor and super slowly, we're gonna lower down one vertebra at a time until that pelvis comes down. Beautiful. So let's grab a hold of your block. We're gonna place it in between your thighs and reach your legs straight up toward the ceiling. So feel your sacrum moving down toward the floor. Now interlace your hands behind your head, cupping your skull. Take an inhale breath here. Exhale, lift up off your shoulder blades. Nice. And then look down at your belly and push your lower back ribs down into the floor and feel kind of the front seam of your body moving down toward the back seam. It's gorgeous. Inhale, lower back down. Exhale, lift up off the shoulder blades. Feel the pubic bone and those front ribs zip towards each other. Nice. And inhale, lower back down. Exhale, lift up off the shoulder blades. We're not cranking on the neck, but we're holding the abs down. And then not changing your sacrum on the floor there. Just see if you can move your legs away a little bit. It might be like half an inch, an inch and then pull them back up to where you started and inhale to lower, nice. Exhale, come up off the shoulder blades, hold that sacrum down on the floor, move the legs away just a little bit and then feel like you can zip that pubic bone back up to pull the legs back to center, nice. Inhale, lower back down. We're gonna add one more thing on here. Exhale, come up off the shoulder blades Move the legs away a little bit. Pull them back up by zipping up that pubic bone. Now reach your fingers up towards your feet. Reach from the shoulder blades a little bit more as you pull your front body down toward the back. Hands behind your head. Inhale to lower. We got one more just like that. Here we go. Exhale, lift up. Move the legs away a little bit. Keep that sacrum on the floor. Pull it back up by zipping that pubic bone up. Reach your fingers up towards your feet. Reach more from the shoulder blades. Hands behind your head. Inhale to lower. Feet come down. Amazing work. All right. So you can take the block off to the side here. Bring your feet mats width apart. And then let your knees come over to the right, but keep the sole of that left foot Dip, pushing down into the floor. Nice. And you can feel a little bit of this left glute action like a bridge driving forward a bit to open up the front of this left thigh. Now we're going to reach your left arm overhead. Does not have to get all the way back here. And then we're going to take the right hand and gap at this left wrist. So you kind of wrap your fingers around the wrist and then reach back. So you're just creating a little more space. There, and as you gap in that left wrist, feel like you're pulling all the way from that left hip. Nice. Good. And then we'll switch sides. Take the knees over to the left. Keep pushing into the sole of the right foot. Feel a little bit of this bridge action in that right glute to help you open up the front of that right thigh. Right arm reaches back, left fingers, just kind of wrap around right at this little wrist. You can feel like this little, this little gap here. And then reach more and feel like you are reaching all the way from the right hip. And keeping that feeling of just lightly zipping up the pubic bone feeling the pubic bone and the lower ribs move towards each other. And then we'll come back up through center and let's come around into a quadruped tabletop position. So grab a hold of your block again and we're gonna place the block on the sacrum right at the base of your spine here. Now the block is just going to act as feedback Right, so that we are not letting the pelvis 
tilt forward and letting the ribs go, right? So keep lower ribs hugged up without rounding your back and feel that pubic bone zipping up. So without letting that block drop, we're gonna try taking the right knee out to the right a little bit and bring it back down. And then left leg out to the left a little bit and back down. So let's keep going there at your own pace. Watching that the chin is not jutting forward, but you're lifting the back of the skull up. And just noticing here what you find, right? So if the block is falling or if you're finding it really difficult to maintain more of this neutral positioning in your pelvis, Right? It's not bad or wrong, but it's just information for you. So let's do one more each side. Perfect. All right, so let's take the block off to the side. We're going to set up for a dolphin. So you can have the forearms parallel or your fingers interlaced. But now feel these front ribs lift up. We're going to tuck the toes and pike the hips up. So you can bend your knees as much as you need to here. Nice. For me today, that is going to be quite a bit. And then let your head go and really hold those lower front ribs in. Perfect. Feel from your hip creases where you had your fingers earlier, lifting up. Lift that up. Nice. Now we're going to lift your left leg up just to about hip height. And we're gonna do little circles at the level of the hip. Right, so you can imagine almost like stirring a pot. <laughs> They're just little circles without moving anything else. Switch directions. Nice. Keep holding those front ribs up and then lift that right hip crease up more. Set the left foot down. Right leg lifts up just to about hip height. And then we're just gonna do those little circles. So you're thinking about maintaining positioning of the pelvis, right, as we just move within that hip joint. That's gorgeous. Switch directions. Keep lifting that left hip crease up. And we'll step that right foot down. Can lower your knees. Maybe take a little child's pose if that feels nice. Come back to that breath. In and out through the nose. All right. And then we're all gonna meet standing at the front of your mat. You can always have your blocks here if you like. For things like downward facing dog. And then we're going to come all the way up to stand here and just checking in with the positioning here. So you can always soften your knees a little bit and feel more of this neutral pelvis. We're not slouching down here. We're not letting the pelvis tilt forward. So just imagine these two front pelvic points moving straight forward. Ribs are held in, head is moving back. Good. Let's take an inhale, bring your arms forward and up. As you exhale, hinge at your hips, plant your hands on the floor or blocks, slide your right foot back, lower the knee, come onto the top of that right foot. Inhale, bring your arms up. Feel this right glute wrapping down, front of that right hip lifting up. Plant the hands, we're gonna come into tabletop, quadruped. Feel lower front ribs in here, as if you were balancing that block still on your sacrum. Step your right foot back, your left foot back for plank. Keeping the head lifted without jutting the chin forward. Lower the knees straight down. Bend your elbows just a tiny bit, keeping the fronts of the shoulders lifted. Straighten your arms. Lift into downward facing dog. Let your head relax and then feel here those hip creases lifting up. We're going to slide the right foot forward. Lower the left knee, come onto the top of the foot. Inhale, bring your arms up. Nice. Feel the tailbone length down, lengthen down, feel that left glute working. 
the front of that left thigh lifting up. Plant your hands floor or blocks, slide your left foot forward. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hinge and fold, sitting back into the hips, plant the hands, step the left foot back, lower the knee, but keep the toes tucked. And then bring your arms up again here. So you can think about energetically dragging the right heel back toward the left leg. And then we're going to grab a hold of your left wrist, just like we did before. Do that little gapping move. So reach up. You're lifting with those right fingers. And imagine you were pulling all the way from the front of the left hip. Couple more breaths there. Feel that left glute working. Feel that the front ribs are staying held back. And then we'll bring the hands down, come into your quadruped or tabletop again. Imagine the block on that sacrum, keeping the pubic bone and lower ribs zipped up. Left foot steps back, right foot back for plank. Lower the knees straight down, bend your elbows just a tiny bit. Straighten your arms, lift up, downward facing dog. Feel the hip creases lifting up. We're going to step the left foot forward. Lower the right knee, but keep the toes tucked under. And then inhale, bring your arms up. Feel the tailbone lengthen down. We're going to gap the right wrist with the left fingers and then lift up. I feel like you can pull that all the way from the front of this right hip. You just feel here, we set that pelvis up in neutral and it creates this freedom to be able to move in bigger and different ways. One more breath. And we'll bring the hands down, blocks or floor. Step the right foot up to meet the left. Rise to stand, big full breath in. Exhale, hinge and fold. Now you can have your fingertips on the floor or on your blocks. We're gonna slide the right foot back for like a lunge on fingertips here. And now feel we're holding the ribs in and then we are sitting back into that left hip crease, so really deepening there. Nice. We're not jutting the chin forward, but lift the back of your head up. Now we're gonna end up floating our arms back. So Push down into your big toe mounds. Feel the strength in your legs as you reach your arms back. Notice the shoulder blades are held on your back ribs there. We're not letting the ribs thrust forward. You got it. It's working this nice, strong, beautiful pelvis. Feel that right glute working. One more breath. We're going to take this into a warrior variation, so spin your right heel down. You can take your left hand or forearm onto the left thigh and reach the right arm up. Nice. Maybe let this left ear relax toward your shoulder a bit. Nice. One more inhale. Exhale, windmill up and around to the back of the mat, twisted crescent, left hand comes down either to the floor or your block. And then we're going to rotate the ribs to the right without letting this left shoulder dip forward. So hold that shoulder blade on your back. Right arm reaches straight up. Nice. And then even here, feel a little bit of that zipping up, pubic bone and ribs. Nice. Reaching up from those right fingertips, that's it. Feel a little activity in that left glute. Now you can bring your right hand down, lower your left knee. I'm going to take a quadruped with the right leg reaching back. So imagine here, once again, that little zipping action of pubic bone and ribs. Perfect. And then we'll lower the right knee underneath you. Left leg reaches back. Same thing, zip up. Talking to your brain here. Lower the left knee. One more each side, right leg reaches back, 
Notice that the pelvis is not tilting forward. Right knee lowers, left leg reaches back. Left knee comes down, we're gonna lift up, downward facing dog, right leg reaches up, bend the knee, and let's just start to circle in this right hip. All right, so we have a little bit more to stabilize here than we did in our dolphin because our arms are straight. Hold those ribs and we're just moving in the hip. You could also do this with a straight leg. Going both directions there. Nice. And then we're gonna push into the hands, lift up from the top of that right thigh to step that right foot as far forward as you can. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Lift your back leg, bent knee, standing L. So feel this right hip crease move back and your spine stays nice and long. That's it. You've got that little triangle of front pelvic points and pubic bone all gathering towards each other. Step your left foot down next to your right and we'll rise to stand. Inhale, one more side to go here, you're doing great. Exhale, hinge and fold. Fingertips are down on blocks or the floor. I'm gonna slide the left foot back and then feel that right hip crease moving back. Spine stays nice and long. Left glute is working for you. All right, here we go. We're gonna hover the arms back. So push down, especially into your big toe mounds. Trust the strength of your legs. Reach your arms back. Feel the shoulder blades pull down toward the floor. That is what floats your arms up. We're not changing the position of the ribs. Don't let them thrust. You got this. Feel the strength in that pelvis that allows you to move well. Now we're gonna spin your left heel down. Right palm or right forearm can come to your right thigh. Left arm can reach up, or your variation. Ah, take a few nice big breaths, almost breathing up into that left side waist and rib cage. Now we're gonna windmill up and around to the front of the mat. Twisted crescent, right hand comes down, floor or block. And then we're gonna turn our ribs to the left. The left arm can reach straight up. But feel this right shoulder doesn't dip forward. So hold that shoulder blade on your back ribs. And even there, just feel almost like a consolidation of the pelvis. And then we're turning the ribs without letting the pelvis move. Working that right glute, you can always reach back, give it a little tap. And then we're gonna bring the left hand down, lower your right knee underneath you for quadruped. Left leg reaches back. Imagine that block still on the sacrum. Bring the left knee underneath you, reach the right leg back. Keep going there at your own pace. And just like we were doing at the beginning, notice how you can move in the hip joints without letting the whole pelvis bop around. And oftentimes that's a really subtle feeling especially when we are in the habit of maybe moving the pelvis instead of the hips, right? So just letting this be an opportunity for you to pay attention. And then we'll come back into tabletop, pike your hips up, downward facing dog, left leg lifts up. You can bend the knee or keep the leg straight. And we'll just start to circle in the hip. Keep the front of that right hip lifted. Circle the opposite way. Got a nice little pop there. Great. And then we're gonna step this foot forward, but push into the hands and then pull the top of that left thigh up to help you step further forward. Hands can be down floor or blocks. Right leg reaches back. Now feel that left hip crease moving back without the ribs popping forward. So keep that length in your back. One more breath. And we'll step that right foot down next to the left. Come down to a seat. 
and we are going to make our way onto our back. You can always have something behind your head if you like. You can have your knees bent, your feet on the floor, or your legs straight. Just whatever is going to feel more comfortable for you today. And take a moment there, just wiggle, fidget, move anything around, adjust anything that you need. Just feel yourself settle. And just noticing just a sense of softness, of ease. And how you can better drop into that, how it's easier to drop into that when you know that you're held, when you know that you're supported. Just like that tree with the sturdy trunk and the expansive root system. Right, it can move and wave. Know that it's not going to break. And let your next few breaths be a little bit deeper. You can start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, in your own time, and make your way back up to a comfortable seat. Just always optional. You can always stay there longer if you like. And take one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. Just feel beneath your hands your strength, your power, your structure, your stability right, residing just in this core, in the center of your body. When we tap into that, we can start to move and live 
in ways that invigorate us, that bring us joy, and that allow us to be the best versions of ourselves. Let's take one more breath together. Full breath in through your nose. Exhale and let it go. If your eyes are closed, just go ahead and blink them open. <sighs> Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's super helpful. If you give this class a thumbs up, if you enjoyed it, um, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss a new class that I post. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Thanks.